Command Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till you're home from the hospitals and back from over there. Hi, gang, this is Hugh Brundy. Bringing up another command performance with the lineup as requested in your wonderful letters to Armed Forces Radio Los Angeles, USA. You know, you guys certainly know how to pick winners because the talent department tonight is chock full of real good stuff, believe you me. Now, to start the ball rolling, we've got a gal you've uh, seen starred in many a picture. The most recent one was The Champion, a very appropriate title for this wonderful gal because when it comes to looks and talent, brother, she's a champion. And here she is, Marilyn Maxwell. You ought to meet Sugar drips from his lips When he sighs But the love Lights that lies Within my baby's eyes How it lies How it lies How it lies He has style He has charm And a pair of loving arms That I'm dying to try on For size But the love Lights that lies Within my baby's eyes, how it lies, ooh, how it lies. His name tops the list of every florist. His girls are standing ten deep in line. With all of the trees in the forest, why should I be the only clinging vine? The one that you adore Is the devil in an angel's disguise But the love light the light Is the love light the dies Well, I tried and I tried and I cried and I cried But I can't figure out the reason why But I do know that he has That was wonderful. Gosh, you know, you stayed away from command too long. Well, I couldn't help it, Hugh. I've, I've been awfully busy doing pictures and personal appearances. and Well, for the past two weeks, I've been ill, very ill. Gee, I'm awful sorry to hear that, Marilyn. Uh, uh, what did you have? $20 on the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> no, just what you mean. I, I blew a few coconuts in that direction myself, you know. Uh, how about giving us a little advance information on what we've got cooking here tonight, huh? Well, sure thing, Hugh. Standing in the wings waiting for the command to step up to the mic is a young man that starred with the famous Dead End Kids. He's an ex-GI who's come a long way up the ladder of success on his own since then, doing radio, pictures, and theater appearance. And here he is, the very versatile Bobby Jordan. Thank you very much. Hello, Marilyn. Why, Bobby Jordan, how you've changed. Changed? Why, yes, since the last time we were together, we were just kids in the same neighborhood. You always tried to kiss me, and I remember you wore those loose-fitting clothes and had long, scraggly hair. Yeah, I remember, too. You wore those tight-fitting dresses and had long, sharp fingernails. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad to see that you've changed from a tough little ragamuffin to a nice-appearing gentleman. Yeah, ain't that quaint? Bobby, Bobby, you don't mean ain't. You nope. mean isn't. Oh, yeah. Isn't that quizzent? <laughs> Oh, well, it's no use. We'd better get to the talent. <laughs> Bobby? Bobby, what? I understand you really dreamed up a swell routine. What's it going to be? Well, Marilyn, uh, I've often wondered about folks watching someone doing impersonations of various movie stars, and if they didn't think of them as, uh, as being a thief because they were doing something that doesn't belong to them. Well, I'd like to say that the people who are being impersonated are the ones who are really the thieves. And just as an example, if you will, picture yourselves in a courtroom where Charles Boyer is on trial for stealing scenes in all his pictures. The prosecuting attorney is Jimmy Cagney, the judge is Ronald Coleman, and the defense counsel is Razzle Bathroom. <laughs> uh, Razzle... Uh, uh, George Sanders. 
That's close. <laughs> it might start something like this with the prosecuting attorney, James Cagney. All right, boy, hey, listen to me, you lend lease actor. I want you to know you've been caught stealing scenes from all the girls, that's right, all the girls that you work with. Now, boy, hey, what have you got to say for yourself, huh? What? <laughs> I, I do not have very much to say. All I can say is I cannot help it if I'm a lover. You see, I've always been a student in the art of love. Uh, <laughs> love. Love. Wonderful love. L-U-F. Love. <laughs> All right, boy, eh? I got a guest witness here. I'd like to ask him to say a couple of words. Humphrey Bogart, what have you got to say? All right, Cagney, drop the case. Thank you, Humphrey Pushcart. <laughs> and right now, what do you got to say for yourself, boy, eh? Well, right now, I would like to have my attorney represent me, Mr. George Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> In the past few moments, you've worked me down next. I'm tired of your tomfoolery in your photo wall. And if you keep this up, you shall enjoy the immediate distinction of having your face colliding with my fist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Your Honor, <laughs> Mr. Coleman, what do you have to say? Ronald? Ronald? I, I do not have very much to say, but I think the defendant, Mr. Boyer, should definitely be released. You see, uh, there is a lack of evidence. Ah, yes, there is. The case should be dismissed. Uh, just a minute, just a minute here. What are you doing to me, Coleman? You mean that's all you're going to say? Yes, I'm afraid it is. You see, I have to be running along now, for I have to go home and polish my Oscar. Thank you. Ah, oh, that's slightly sensational, Bobby. But don't go away, because it's time now for another wonderful guest. She's a gal whose capital records are really capital. As soon as the platters reach the music stars, they're all gone. For this and other reasons you'll soon see, she's known as the real gone gal, Miss Nellie Lutcher. Thank you. Got a little tune I'd like to do for all you fellows, and especially for Jack Conbach and the MP Battalion at APO 57, rather. 757, seven, I'm sorry. It's called a baby. Please stop and think about me. If someone else turns the lights down low And all you hear is your heart beating slow If you're afraid that you can't say no Baby, please stop and think about me If someone else kind of starts that thrill You won't stop, but you haven't the will If every kiss makes your feet stand still Baby, please stop and think about me Just keep an eye on your love Don't let it go to waste Love is like a bottle of wine The longer you save it, the better it'll taste If someone else kind of hold you tight And take you up to the dizziest height You know it's wrong, but if it seems right Oh, baby, please stop and think about me oh. Ah, 
swell, swell. Oh, there's only one Nellie Lutcher, one of our favorite people. And speaking of favorite people, let's welcome one of the finest. It's a great feeling to see his fine movies, such as the latest hit entitled, It's a Great Feeling. And you tell us it's a greater feeling to have him on your own show. So without further ado, let's bring on Jack Command Performance Carson. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Marilyn, you gorgeous, lovable, delectable creature. Come here right in my arm. <laughs> Why? Why, Jack? <laughs> Jack Carson, you kissed me. Yeah. Some dames get all the breaks. <laughs> where, where do you get your license to kiss me? For this, you need a license, too. <laughs> Look, I even brought you a present, something from my latest picture, The Good Humor Man. Now playing the Capacity House at your neighborhood theater, put fresh popcorn in the lobby. Oh. That's a pretty hard thing to say. Oh, yes, Jack, that's very nice. Is it one of those chocolate ice cream things? I love them. No, no, it's my own concoction. It's chocolate-covered brown bread on a stick. <laughs> Chocolate-covered brown bread on a stick. Yeah. I call it a pumpernickel sickle. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I, I thought so. Cat's Jack Carson spending any real money on a gal. Now, now, wait a minute, Marilyn. The last time we went out, didn't I promise you dinner with chilled wine and candlelight? Yeah, but it turned out to be warm Pepsi-Cola and a match. <laughs> You'll never get me out with you again. Oh, please, Marilyn, just tonight. Come on. This time, I promise we'll look at television from... Inside the store. No, no, sir. I can't anyway. You see, I promised Bobby Jordan I'd go out with him. Marilyn, come with me and we'll look at the stars from my penthouse on the 86th floor. No, that's too high for me. I also have a room in the second floor. <laughs> but, Jack, if you live in a penthouse on the 86th floor, why do you need a room on the second floor? In case some nights I don't feel like going home. <laughs> I'm not going out with you tonight. It's still Bobby Jordan, because, you see, he's a nice, talented kid. Talented? Mm -hmm. Why, because he does those imitations? Well, can you do them? <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, my darling, be mine, darling. Don't leave me, darling. Don't leave me to a lonely life of just sitting there every night polishing my Oscar. <laughs> Oh. <clears throat> if you could only sing. Marilyn, mm -hmm. I can do Frank Sinatra and Nelson Eddy, too. Really? Well, yeah. let me hear your Frank Sinatra. <clears throat> the music stops. <laughs> oh, Jack, that's terrific. Well, now, 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 Nelson Eddy. Nelson Eddy? Nelson Eddy, Okay, <clears throat> Nelson Eddy. Mammy's little baby like shortening, shortening. Mammy's little baby like... <laughs> Mammy's baby, I'll start again. <laughs> Mammy's little baby like shortening, shortening. Mammy's little baby likes... Shortening. <clears throat> Mammy's little baby like... <clears throat> Mammy's little baby like... Shortening. <clears throat> The music Magnificent. Uh, say, Marilyn, you know, I've just been talking to Jack Carson. He says he'd uh, like to do his version of the champion. Jack Carson is a champion? <laughs> does, does he know anything about boxing? I heard that, Marilyn. Of course I know a lot about boxing. I started out as a boxer. In fact, I won my first three fights by knockouts. 
Then they ran out of Andrews sisters. Oh, <laughs> Gee, Jack, you know, th- that was a wonderful picture, wasn't it? I'll say. All the other studios admitted it, too. After the champion was previewed, Warner Brothers said... Magnificent! RKO said... Stupendous! Paramount said... Colossal! And Republic Studios said... Presenting the command performance version of this movie tonight. Playing the part of Midge Kelly, the prize heel, will be Mr. Jack Carson, who tonight will be known as Smudge Carson. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to do this. <laughs> oh, sure you do, Jack. The part of Smudge is tailored to fit your talents. A gang, our drama tonight fits Jack Carson like a glove. And the title of our story is. <laughs> A chump. I am Marilyn, Smudge Carson's sister. As a baby, Smudge was very cute. He had the bluest eyes, the blondest hair, and the cutest little button nose. Yeah, and I almost starved to death on account of it. It was buttoned to my lower lip. <laughs> One day, he came running into the living room. Hey, Pop. Oh, well, it's my daughter, Gwendolyn. <laughs> oh, Pop, it's me, your son, Smudge. Look, Pop, can I have a suit of my own to wear? I'm getting tired of wearing sister's slacks. <laughs> all the other boys laugh at me. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. After all, in this world, some people have, and some have not. That's why they laugh. <laughs> sister has, I have not. <laughs> and they were way ahead of me there. And stop complaining and leave me alone. A man can't even read in his own house. Pop left the room. But I was determined to gain my point. So I followed him into the room where he always did his reading. The one room in the house where he loved to sit and read. <laughs> Library. I opened the door, and there sat Father, reading the mellow passages from the classics he adored. A C D cow. What does the cow say? The cow says, "Moo moo." Oh, Pop. Oh, see the sheep. What does the sheep say? The sheep says, ba ba. Oh, Pop, it's me, your son. Oh, see the baboon. <laughs> now, go away. Go away. Go body your grandmother. Oh, uh, okay. So I wanted to see Grandma. Dear old Grandma. Sitting there with a shawl, quietly sipping her medicine. Oh, Grandma, I said, reaching out my hand, and in her soft, sweet, mellow voice, she gently cooed. Get your hands off that beer, jerk! I paid for them there, suds! <laughs> uh, son? Yeah, Grandma? It's time I had a little talk with you. How old are you now? I'm 12 years old. You lazy bum, when I was your age, I was 17. <laughs> job. But, Grandma, what kind of a job? Why don't you be a fighter? A great boxer? A boxer? But, Grandma, all those punches might change my looks. Well, what are you waiting for, stupid? <laughs> oh, Smudge, darling. What is it, Gertrude? <laughs> Smudge, I hear you're planning to leave this town. Smudge, if you do leave town, remember what Horace Greeley said. He said, go west, young man. And then do you know what happened? Yeah. The young men all went west, and the horse really stayed east with all the girls. <laughs> if I go, will you kiss me goodbye? Yeah, but she... No girl would want to kiss me. I guess. Mm. Oh, Smudge. <laughs> Smudge, you're so 
handsome, so rugged, so masculine. You're an Adonis. Oh. Oh, you're wonderful and marvelous and desirable. I am? Mm -hmm, certainly. And the most beautiful girl in the world would give everything she has to get one kiss from you. She would? Yes. Then what am I doing with a bag like you? <laughs> You've inspired me, Gertrude. I'm going to go west and seek my fortune. Oh, wonderful. Hiya, beautiful. How'd you like to ride with a lonesome gal? Heavens to Betsy and mercy's sakes alive. <laughs> on your way, you wolfus. I'm not interested. Ah, oh, come on, snake hips. Don't play so hard. <laughs> I didn't do a thing. <laughs> Listen, honey, don't play so hard to get. Hop in. Madam, if you don't stop annoying me, I'll call the police. Oh, come on, dreamy eyes. <laughs> Are you going to be a sweet lover man and put your arm around me, or aren't you? Now look, listen. I never said this to a girl before, but... Yes? I think I'll get out and walk. <laughs> Madam, let him take your hands off of me. Careful. Careful, you're going to rip my shirt. Oh, baby, you got a smooth chest. <laughs> I ought to have the one man in seven who shaves every day. What a built on this man. Built? <laughs> Well, honey, if I fix it so you can become a champ prize fighter, will you be good to me? Good to you. I'll be unbelievably wonderful to you. I'll, I'll let you kiss me. All right, honey. But remember, I'm expensive. Yeah, well, just wear a tighter girdle. Nobody will notice it. <laughs> Through my help, Smudge Carson got fight after fight. With each fight, Smudge Pot got more and more vicious. He became famous. And finally, he reached the pinnacle, his first fight at Madison Square Garden. Ah, uh, but here's where fate catches up with Smudge. It's a few minutes before the crucial fight. Evening, gents. I came in to have a talk with you punks. Who are you? I'm the boss of this town, Blackie Jordan. Why do they call you Blackie? I never take a bath. <laughs> so, uh, so you're the boss of this town, eh? Yeah, you want to make something of it? What's the matter, your parents give up? <laughs> Listen here, blubber, one more crack like that and I'll take a piece of chicken liver and bash your brains in. Oh, yeah? You do and I'll... I'll... You'll what? I'll think all over you. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen here, Blackie, what do you want? Listen, Marilyn and I want Smudge to throw this fight tonight on account of we own a big piece of the guy he's fighting. Oh, yeah? I'm gonna knock his head off. I don't care, that ain't the piece we own. <laughs> all right, get out of here, Blackie. We ain't doing no business with no hoodlums, eh? Listen, smart boy, button your lip. I got two big guns in my pockets, and if I have to make a move, there's gonna be trouble. What do you mean? My pants will fall down. <laughs> well, look, Blackie, don't pick a fight with me. Look, I'm twice as big as you are. You know something? That don't scare me. I'll break you in half and fight you one at a time. <laughs> now, look, smudge pot. You know my times. Yeah? Either I throw the fight or you take me for a ride. That's it. Well, I ain't throwing a fight. You mean you'd rather go for a ride? Yeah. I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock. You bring the girls. Right. <laughs> oh, that's, that's beautiful. Jack a boy. And say, Marilyn, how about climaxing the festivities with a good night tune? Very well, Hubert. Here's I'm in love with a wonderful guy. It's for all the bedside networkers, especially Ward B at Castle Point. I'm as corny as Kansas in August. I'm as normal as blueberry pie. No more smart little girl with no heart. I have found me a wonderful guy. With the conventional dither, with the conventional... 
conventional star in my eye. And you'll know there's a lump in my throat when I speak of that wonderful guy. I'm as tried and as gay as the daisy in May and cliche coming through. I'm bromidic and bright as the moon, happy night pouring light on the dew. I'm as corny as Kansas in August. High as the flag on the 4th of July If you'll excuse an expression I use I'm in love with a wonderful guy I'm as tried and as gay as the daisy in May A cliche coming true I'm bromidic, bright as the moon Happy night pouring light on the dew while working with you. Thanks, Jack, and it's been fun working with all the fine people, working for all our fine listeners. Gang, we've, we've had a marvelous roster on command performance tonight, but with Jack Carson, Nellie Lutcher, Bobby Jordan, announcing by Hugh Brundage, the acting of Bud Whittem and June Foray. And, and Marilyn Maxwell. Mm -hmm. Ah, sweet Marilyn. There's only one Maxwell who really has a house. <laughs> I'll see you, Jack. Wait, wait a minute, honey. <laughs> honey, why don't you go out with me tonight? Whatever for? Well... First, we'll just get friendly. Mm -hmm. Then we'll get romantic. Mm -hmm. Then we'll get engaged. Then, Marilyn, we'll, we'll get married. And before you know it, why, we'll have six or eight children. Oh, yeah? Not before I know it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for asking us in, gang. And lots of luck. Good night. Bye. Bye. Speaking, this program was arranged with the aid of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>